Alrighty, folks, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, today we are going to be talking about guilds, what those mean. I believe it's one of your, whoopsie, I believe it is one of your vocab words. Let me get this just right here. All right, so guilds, uh, make sure your bell work's done. Make sure that we are staying quiet. All right. Which word? All right. Going back to the vocab review, this was an occupation, a person's job. How does that relate to what we're talking about with guilds? Guild, an organization of people of the same trade or the same job to protect their benefits and maintain standards. Now, when it comes to trades, we're not talking about trading a pencil for a piece of paper. We're talking about if I have a skilled for example, if I can weld, if I can do carpentry, if I can do some sort of thing where it's not just like grunt, easy work, it's something I have to learn, that is what's called a trade. So a guild is an organization of people of the same trade to protect their benefits and maintain standards. All right, why would someone care if someone else is doing the same job doing it poorly for example why would a shoemaker care if another shoemaker was making cheaper shoes of lesser quality all right i will have a play pause it up for that all right go ahead and read the section in your textbook page 259 what did guilds do all right so from your textbook trade encouraged townspeople to produce many different products more products you have, the more products you can make, the more you can trade with other people. Craftspeople organize guilds or business groups. Each craft had its guild. Guilds control businesses and trade in a town. They set the price for a product or a service. They also set and force standards of quality for products. So let's back up just a second. They set the price for a product or service. They're saying, if I am making a shoe, it cannot be any cheaper than this, it cannot be more expensive than this. All right, so they set the price. They also set and force the standards. So you cannot, whoopsie, you cannot make a just a come into the town, make a crummy shoe, and then everything will be okay. It has to be a, of a certain quality. Or you could not join the guild. All right, guilds, in the last sentence there, in addition, guilds decided who could join a trade. So for example, when we do group work, and you know there's always that one person that doesn't do any, any of the work, but they still get an A, that person can't be part of the guild. All right, they have to be um, decided upon by the guild to see who can and who can't join. So if you are someone who doesn't do a lot of work, or if you make a crappy shoe, you can't join the guild. All right, so guilds, craftsmen who control business and trade in towns join groups known as guilds. They set prices and standards. If someone was allowed to sell goods that did not last or would easily break, the entire group of craftsmen suffered. Again, that looked bad on that guild, on that group. Therefore, they formed these guilds to protect their trade from charlatans, all right? Basically, fakers, posers, wannabes. All right, from your textbook, an apprentice or trainee learned a trade from a master artisan who provided room and board but no wages. After completing this training, the apprentice, let's stop there, let's go back to your vocab. What does apprentice mean? Basically someone who's learning uh, some, under someone else. So for example, if someone has a student teacher, maybe you've been in the class before, that would be that teacher's apprentice. So, the apprentice would become a journeyman who would work under a master for a daily wage. So, progression. You were apprentice, journeyman, then a craftsman. This is similar to for knights. You were a page, a squire, and then a knight. All right. Craftsman guilds led to a new merchant class. For the first time in European history, a new class of citizens is formed. Remember, you had the feudalism system where you had the... Uh, the kings and nobles at the top, the serfs down at the bottom. All right, so these are former serfs peasants who now have become trained. Now they have a trade. They are either craftsmen or farmers with a surplus due to advances in technology that we talked about yesterday. 
or a new group of merchants returning from the Crusades with new items like silk, spices that they picked up along the way in the Middle East, which were in high demand. So this new group of people, known as the merchants, are either craftsmen, farmers, or people who took from the Middle East silk, spices, and now can trade that because this stuff is in high demand. So this is the new merchant class. So these people who had goods to trade can now require money or other goods in exchange for their goods. For the first time in history, the non-wealthy had money in their pockets. So again, the serfs, the peasants, the people that started from the bottom, they are now here, kind of. right? They are now your middle merchant class. All right, Craftsman's Guild leads to a new merchant class. This meant they could buy things to and move to the towns to live. Uh, they either congregated in two places, around taverns or hotels, or around churches. This led to a growth of towns and villages. If you are a, someone who's trading quite a bit, do you want to live in the city? Do you want to live in the town? Or do you want to be spread out in the country? Probably you want to be in a town close to where you can make the most money. We talked yesterday about why there's so many people moving to Murfreesboro, Nashville area, because there's a lot of money, a lot of jobs around here to be made. So, more guilds were formed in urban areas as more craftsmen flocked to these new towns and cities. All right, so your assignment. Again, you do not have any notes today. You are going to define guild and your guilds in your own words. All right, you can use anything that I've said in the play posit. You can use your notes, your vocab list. Just give me one or two sentences of definition of guilds. Doing your own research on labor unions. So, look up labor unions. In 10 to 12 sentences, compare and contrast guilds and labor unions. There are a lot of similarities. When we think of your parents and when they work and they get a paid vacation, that comes from labor unions fighting for that years ago. All right. When we think of working at 8 to 5 or 8 hours a day, it wasn't always like that. During the Industrial Revolution, you had 6-year-old kids working 14 hours a day until labor unions came around to be. Now you'll talk more about this your freshman year of high school, but as of right now, look up labor unions, find out what they are, and then compare and contrast them to guilds. All right, once you are finished, turn it in to your class box and uh, we will be good to go. So you should be working. If you need paper, let me know. Shouldn't hear you. Have a great Wednesday. Is it tomorrow Wednesday? Yes, tomorrow's Wednesday.